Hi, this is the first in a series of videos I'm going to produce here dealing with seismic risk metrics. So we're going to start thinking about our risk calculations and how do we quantify risk, what types of basic calculations do we do related to assessing risk. Related to the book, this is material from Chapter 9. I'm also going to include a little bit later some content from Appendix B relating to fragility function fitting. Okay, so let's get started. We've previously talked through hazard results. If we look down at our flowchart here, we've, we've got hazard. And now what we want to think about is if we understand the hazard in terms of ground shaking potential at our site, we need to include now some consequence models that are going to tell us, given some ground shaking, what's going to happen to our assets. And we're going to put those things together to compute risk. How do we quantify a consequence model? How do we characterize consequences? And then how do we put those models together with our hazard results in order to get at risk? Just to think this through a little bit, this is a, um, a photo over on the right from Chenille Maffei at California Earthquake Authority. Some houses in the Napa earthquake in 2014 in California. A couple houses that are nominally similar looking. They experienced probably very similar shaking since they were sitting right next door to each other. Uh, the house on the left had uh, damage, uh, um, probably due to some uh, cripple walls, some lower level structural features. The house on the right is undamaged. It seems to, to have not had that same type of failure. And so. We've clearly got some consequence here from this shaking. These two buildings had different susceptibility to consequences given the same level of shaking. So how do we characterize that in a model in a way that we can try to assess the differential risk between two structures with slightly different characteristics? Okay, so I'm going to set up a couple basic definitions here for some models to quantify these consequences. There's a couple ways we do this. On the left-hand side, we're thinking about cases where we've got binary or discrete outcomes. So the easiest uh, thing to think about is a binary outcome. Either we have a failure or we don't. And the model needs to characterize the probability of failure. So on the horizontal axis, we'll have some metric of ground shaking intensity via an intensity measure. And on the vertical axis, this function is going to tell us, given that intensity measure equaling some amplitude, what's the probability of failure? And failure can be a variety of things. We'll talk about that in just a second. We can also have discrete outcomes where maybe there's dis uh, a discrete set of damage states and then failure will be um, occurrence or exceedance of some level of damage. So again, there's some sort of yes, no outcome that we can characterize. The other situation we face is that we might have some sort of distribution of consequences. So that could be a repair cost is an easy one to think about. I'm here, you know, I'm pointing at the, the vertical axis on, on both of these plots in terms of the outcomes. So now we'll have the intensity measure again, some level of sh ground shaking intensity, but instead of a binary yes, no outcome, we'll have some sort of probability distribution of that consequence. So if we have a probability distribution, then we can start thinking about computing the probability of that consequence exceeding some threshold, for example, and that's what's indicated by that shaded region there. All right, so this is an area where the field of seismic risk analysis doesn't have total consistency. So I'm gonna use this terminology fragility functions and vulnerability functions. But this is not universal, unfortunately. So you'll sometimes hear consequence functions used to describe one or the other of these, or vulnerability functions used generically to talk about kind of anything related to impacts. You'll have to, when you face some new circumstance, try to pause for a second and think about what exactly is getting quantified. But just for the sake of trying to have some consistent language, I'm gonna use this terminology which is reasonably common, but you may see some discrepancies out there in the world. Okay, so just to think a little bit more precisely about these binary and continuous outcomes, uh, let's just think about some examples of what we could be considering. So if we have a kind of binary failure criteria, I've got a few items listed here on the left as examples. So if we've got this binary failure criteria, we could have something like did material yield, that could be an indication of damage in a structure. Or did some component have a level of failure? So like the windows in the building, did they crack? Or is there a specific uh, amount of a continuous variable, like a reduction in capacity of an element? Structural collapse is a, probably a quick one that comes to mind. We don't have to think about a global collapse necessarily, just something yes or no. All right, so there's lots of things that could happen or not happen. When we're dealing with these binary failure criteria, we're gonna use a fragility function. And we could then use a function to describe what's the probability of material yielding as a function of the ground shaking intensity. On the right hand side, we have these continuous metrics, some examples. So repair cost, again, being an easy one, could range from zero up to the 
the price of replacing the, the asset. Uh, time is another metric that's going to be continuous. Time to reopen, time to repair, uh, fatalities, displaced people, injuries, anything we're counting. Those might be you know, discrete in the sense that there's a, a integer valued numbers of fatalities or displaced people, but nonetheless, we would probably use a continuous consequence function. And then you could also describe the amount of levy settlement or the amount of capacity reduction, those things being continuous. All right, so when we've got these continuous metrics, we're going to use a vulnerability function. Okay, so that's just some basic definitions and some basic context setting to think through what we're, where we're headed. Next, we're going to follow up and go in a little bit more detail on just quantifying and defining these fragility and vulnerability functions.